All right, so welcome back to another Friday video. Hope you guys had a good week. As some of you may know, it's my first month working full-time for Heat. It's been incredible so far working with the entire team. There's so much knowledge I've been already able to tap into, and it's paying off quite nicely for me. This month has been my most profitable month ever selling beats online. I sold a bunch of beats, even sold a few exclusives, about to sell one more hopefully today, and altogether, this month is going to be around $1,400 in sales. Now, part of my job is also being the community manager, and I've been talking with dozens of producers, learning about their struggles and helping them out. And you know what? I'm already seeing a pattern. In today's video, I'll be breaking down some of the common mistakes that I see producers make and how most of these mistakes can be fixed in just a few minutes. And as a bonus, I'll also show you how to make 20% more sales with proof. Uh, we got that mouth. <laughs> As always, subscribe to this channel if you have not yet. We got a lot more content coming out in the next few weeks and the videos are only gonna get better. Also, we really want to make some noise in the community. So if you wanna support, please take a screenshot of you watching the video and tag us on Instagram at Heat Daily. I'm gonna be following back everybody who does on the account. So let's get started. First of all, producers, please, please fix your dead links. So what is a dead link, you may ask? Let me show you. Seriously though, I went through probably 20 random beat videos and landed on as many as like five dead links. Struggling to sell beats online? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're talking about links, it's social media links, bios, descriptions, it all applies. We got some fixing to do here. The first fix is to add a call to action in each spot. Don't just post your links, but tell people why they should click on them. Tell them and lead them what you want their next action to be. For example, click this link in my bio to listen and lease my beats. This one is a stupid easy fix, but can honestly be what drives you more traffic in the long run. And then we have that the link to your beat is below the fold in the YouTube description. This means that someone on desktop needs to click the show more button on YouTube to see your link. Now, if an artist likes your beat and doesn't see the buy link before they open the description, they might assume that the beat isn't for sale or that they have to rip it off YouTube to get the file for using your beat. And if you think that we're exaggerating this, our producers get these questions all the time, even when they did have everything in the right order. Now, this just shows how important that user experience is, making it as easy as possible for artists to find your beats, prices, and then make a purchase. Now, the easiest way to fix this and never worry about it again is to go into the upload default section of YouTube and put everything in there. Now, just remember, if you change your name on any of these platforms, please update them in your descriptions and bios so that they don't go back to being dead links that don't work. Most artists who visit your beat store, they aren't going to buy right away. On average, most e-commerce stores have a 1-3% conversion rate for a first-time visit purchase. We asked Soundy what the average conversion rate was on their platform and they shared us this screenshot. Showing that from all the collective data of all producers on Soundy, the average conversion rate has been 1.5%. So if someone comes to your beat store, they listen around for a few minutes and leave without purchasing. That's it? That's all you have? Did you just lose out on that customer and just hope for them to make their return and buy a beat? The fix for this is a secondary call to action or what's known as a lead magnet. A lead magnet is a marketing term for a free item or service that is given away for the purpose of gathering leads and their contact details. As producers, we offer a lead magnet for one simple reason. It's because you shouldn't be focused on counting your website traffic, but making your traffic count. That means instead of leaving empty handed, they might sign up for our lead magnet, which for most producers is going to be free beats. This is how you make the most out of the little traffic you might be getting. Now that I'm mentioning this, you should consider checking out our free magnet masterclass. It'll show you all about making your traffic count. No hacks or schemes, but actionable steps and strategies to generate sales, regardless of the amount of traffic you're generating. You can find the link below to sign up and watch that for free. But anyways, let's get back to the video. The next mistake will be directly related to how producers fail with utilizing such a good lead magnet. So now that you understand the importance of free beats, this is how you should not go about it. So all around, this becomes a completely messy situation. 
how does this producer get his 20% of profits? How do I actually download the beat for free for profit use? How do I even get the license for free for profit use? Why am I still not subscribed to this damn channel? Now, there's no real contract or marketing strategy in place here. To me, this comes off as a desperate cry for subs, and this is not a business model. You don't want to give away these free-for-profit beats just for fun and to pad your YouTube numbers. A much better strategy is to offer free beats in exchange for an email or a contact address. You can then use that to establish a connection with the artist, follow up with them, and then ask what they think about the beats. If executed correctly, along with the right tools and strategies, this will 100% lead to sales in the future. A perfect example of how this process works is the situation I'm currently in myself with an artist. Now, this artist got my free beat pack and they passed the 1000 stream limit for my free for profit beats. So then they came back to buy a lease. So that was an extra $50. Now he knew about this stream limit because I gave him an actual contract stating it. Then due to the rising popularity, he will now be purchasing an exclusive for the beat this week. With having the right systems in place, I didn't just give away a free beat, I'm now about to sell an exclusive license. But if you want to learn more, we got this super in-depth guide on email marketing available for free for you to read on our blog. That will explain most of the things I did to get this sale, so make sure to check it out once more in the description below. If you remember in our last video, action plus progress equals results. We mentioned that this could be seen as the formula for success if one truly does exist. So then here's my question to you. Which marketing steps are you acting on and then progressing on to get you those results? Here's a better reference. Winners and losers have the same goals. If successful and unsuccessful people share the same goals, then the goal cannot be what differentiates the winners from the losers. It was only when they implemented a system of continuous small improvements that they achieved a different outcome. So while you may not have your exact answer today, which small action steps are you taking to achieve a different outcome in which you do start selling your beats? The common mistake with bulk deals and discounts is that producers think that it's what brings in customers. Sure, it will help you in some situations, but nine times out of 10, that's just not the case. In the journey of an artist buying a beat, do you think the price or deals will drive them in? The answer is no it's more likely your music will do that for you. To us, and from our experience experimenting with different bulk deals to drive more sales, the buy one, get one free sale just doesn't make any sense. Giving an extra beat for free sure is generous, but doesn't help you get better sales. It's like a gift you get just before walking out of the store. That gift that you usually toss away as quickly as you can. So then what's the fix? Instead, start with buy two, get one free, or buy two, get two free. Buy two, get one free indicates similar value to an artist, yet profits you twice the money, doubling the order value from a single customer. Now, this is something Robin researched a while ago and is actually part of the CCS Masterclass, but we'll give you guys this one for free. His study in 2018 showed that over eight months of sales, 23% of his sales were bulk deals. Buy two, get two free. Now, during this time period, he switched the bulk deal on and off and sometimes experimented with different ones like buy one, get one free. What he found was that buy two, get two free was a clear winner. So according to his research, buy two instantly doubled the profit of at least 23% of orders. The buy one, get one free did show similar numbers, but obviously wasn't showing him any extra profit. Robin then applied the same tactic on RuJ stores and basically got the same results, once again, around 20%. So with that 20%, that means that if you can get 100 people to buy beats from you, at least 20% of those will pay twice as much as the other. 80. So let's say you generate 100 sales with an average order of $50. Here's the math. 100 times 50 equals $5,000, and that's without a proper bulk deal. Now, 80 times 50 equals $4,000 and then 20 times 100 equals $2,000. Now in total, you made $6,000. That's an extra $1,000 worth of sales, so 20% more sales. Now we're showing you these numbers just to give you an idea, but really the great thing about Robin's experiment is that it was based on averages, percentages, and orders, not on profits. That means everyone can apply this method as a business grows and profits will grow along. That means that theoretically, even with less orders, you should be able to see similar results, which are 20% more sales. 
If there's anything I learned in the last couple of weeks, it's that the answers to most of my struggles were usually found in my analytics. In order to even get a chance of success selling beats, you need to master and understand the key metrics of your beat selling business. Especially if you want to make it big, these metrics matter. Let me ask you a few questions. How long do people stay on your beat store? Uh... What's the average amount a customer spends on your beat store? Which source is all your traffic actually coming from? YouTube, maybe? Now, good news for you, in next week's video, we'll be diving into the data and analytics of your beat store and how to read and act upon the key metrics that display the performance of your beat selling business. So if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. Also, if there's any mistakes you think we missed in this video, please make sure to leave a comment saying which ones you think are big mistakes producers make all the time. I'll be pinning the comment below, whichever one helps the most. Peace out. Uh, we got that mouth. <laughs>